Okay, the whistle has sounded. Get in your seats. Class has started. Let's talk about whistles today. Okay, class is in session. Thank you for tuning in. This is Mr. Pete, the original YouTube shop teacher. Let's have some fun today. Well, in a recent video, I talked about this little weed and steam engine, and I had to make this little whistle here. So by popular demand, well, it was three people asked if I would make a whistle. So I'm going, to, I'm going to make one of these. It's real easy to do, but I'm going to spend a little bit of time here talking about whistles, steam whistles, air whistles, and this is the whistle I just took down from the wall there in my garage, and this is really a neat whistle. It's, well, let me uh, zoom in and get a little bit closer on this and talk about it. Now, I have owned many steam whistles over the years. I've had Crosby's and Powell's and Lunkenheimer's, and I had a lot of them that I kept down at school, and I used them as a cleanup whistle, just as you saw in the intro. The kids loved it. But this whistle, I, I took it down. I'm ready to sell. I'm selling out, you know. But uh, this is about 14 inches long, but I'm not positive on that because it's a, totally different than this bowl type. And you, I've shown this before, given to me by Bruce, a beautiful whistle, but not very old. I mean, it might be 50 years old, but it's certainly not hundreds of years old. Even this one isn't terribly old, and it is a Westinghouse whistle. Yes, Westinghouse. That's Bakelite. The rest is brass. This is not the correct valve. There should be a valve that's spring-loaded, but the valve is sometimes worth more than the whistle. So... After, now that I've given you a little intro, you might have seen another little whistle up on the wall there too. It was made out of aluminum, and I'm not going to talk about that at all. But I've always had a fascination with whistles, and my brother did a lot of this as well. So what I'm telling you is not scientific, but it's kind of a, what, what Jan told me and what I've discovered over the years in my travel. So let me show you what I came up with here. I made some prototypes in larger sizes so that you can understand what I'm talking about. But near the end of the video I'll be making one of these little whistles which you could make really in a matter of 15 minutes or less. Whatever size you may need for your engine. So what I've done here is taken PVC pipe in different diameters and different lengths just to show you the different tones and notes that you will get. So you can see that there are different lengths here. But why don't I start out by talking about these two smaller ones here that are uh, three-quarter conduit actually. And I got lazy so I'm just using corks on the end because I'm experimenting with the length. But you, we call this the mouth, or I call it the mouth of the whistle, and then there's a plug in here that has a flat side on it. And that's all there is to it. But it takes a little time to get everything to fit. So, you know, I got several hours in on this already, but let's start by, well, I want to tell you one other thing. Remember, my brother Jan was incredibly creative and funny and two to three times smarter than me. But as he was making some of these, since he is an artist and a sculptor, he made big lips out of clay, Roma Plastilina clay, and painted them red. So we had a good laugh over that. Big juicy lips when you would blow on this. So why don't I start here by blowing on the short. So this is about a foot long. And listen to the tone. I'm not sure how well this will uh, be. The sound will carry on this cheap little microphone. But here it is. So that's the sound of a small diameter short one. So now that's the same pipe, but over twice as long. I didn't even measure it. So let me blow on that. Can you see the difference? Or hear the difference? You can't see anything. All right. Let's go to the slightly larger and... I got worn out here making plugs, so I just taped the ends. But originally here, and my brother had done this, I was going to make the plug here so that I could move it in and out to change the pitch. 
but the inside of the PVC is so rough that it just, it just didn't work at all. I wasted an hour. So I, that's why I made two whistles here instead of one, but you've probably seen toy whistles if you're an old man like me where you slid that back and forth when you were a child and when you woke up the next morning and looked for your whistle, it was gone. You had lost it for good, never to reappear. Of course, Mom and Dad had nothing to do with that. So, the inch and a half, about a foot long, made very similarly. Listen to this now. Now, I'm not going to be able to switch back and forth between these two because I only made one of these plugs. I have to remove it now and drive it into this longer one. I'll be right back. I don't even know what you call this part, and it doesn't matter. But I'm making it, or I made it out of a, a Delrin given to me by Jim Desmond uh, quite a while ago. So that's all there is to it. Now, I will push that. It's got to be a pretty good fit. So I, I will struggle with it, and it has to be oriented. And I just milled this off flat, but you could make this out of wood if you want to play around, or just about anything. You know, it's not that critical. Okay, so the short stubby one is ready to go, but it's going to be hard for you to compare it unless you back the video up a little bit. But this is what it sounds like in a short version. You can't miss with these. It just, it'll always work. And I really have never seen a three-mouther like that Westinghouse before in my life. Matter of fact, I never thought about it until I started to make this video. I used to have two of those Westinghouse whistles. I paid a lot of money for them, and I ended up selling one for enough money that, that the other one is essentially free. Now, they were made of brass, and you will get a different sound, I believe, with steam rather than compressed air. Now you don't need compressed air for this. Your lungs are sufficient. Well, let's get back and talk about these dinky little whistles, which is really what this is all about. On these antique toy engines, the whistle is almost always missing because I don't think they were press fitted on there or whatever, but they were lost. So I made this one and I talked about that in this Whedon video that a few of you watched, so that'll bring you up to date. And how did I make this? Well, let's start by talking about this hobby brass that you can buy at any box store. There's always a display of this. It's generally around where they sell the threaded rod and all of that. And sometimes they call it telescoping brass because you can get one that fits very nicely into the other. So, and there's just so many sizes. But this particular one that I need, and you have to make custom make these, of course. This is the label. I kept the label on here, and it says uh, nothing. I don't know what it is. Doesn't matter. It's about quarter inch ID. So I cut off a piece to length, and you don't need to make them long, but it's because this is going to be a shrieker anyway, real high. So you know, make it inch and a half, two inches, or something like that. If you make it too long, you're going to knock it off with your fingers by accident. So cut this to length, and then you need to make a little plug for the end. And I made it out of solid brass, and I held it in with Loctite. But you can crimp it over or make a little bit tighter fit. The ID is rather oversized on this, so a piece of quarter inch brass is not going to fit in here as a press fit. It'll be real loose. So remember that. So you need a, a, to plug one end off and then you need to make that other little part whatever I never did give you a name for. Before I actually start making a little brass whistle, I'm going to show you how to cut the mouth on a larger size because it'll show up better. Now I'm going to do that on the bandsaw but with the small tubing use either a very fine tooth hacksaw because this is a really thin wall or a cutoff wheel with a Dremel and I've already marked this at about one inch up for the bottom cut the straight cut and then another inch and a quarter up for the angle cut. I don't know what angle it is. I never did measure it. It's just baguess and bagosh. So let's go over to the bandsaw. Hold it in a vise so it does not rotate on you 
one way or the other when you make those because there's two cuts. That's all it was to it. I don't know if you could see that when I was sawing. Take the burr off if you want. I'm not going to bother. But that's all there is to it. You could do it on a milling. No, you couldn't really do it on a mill. Use a hand hacksaw or chew it off if you want. Now I'm sure I'll get some good comments on this or corrections, but the fact that there's three mouths on here, I don't think changes the tone at all. I think I said it was a three chime, but maybe it made it louder because in a factory the warning whistles or dinner whistle, whatever, they have to be incredibly loud or incredibly high pitch so that uh, people can hear them over the din and roar and noise on the factory floor. Just for variety, Instead of making it this size, which is a little bit over quarter, uh, quarter inch diameter, this is 3 8 ID. And again, if you use this on real thin, even though this is a very fine blade, it's going to catch because you're, in a way you're cutting sheet metal. It's that thin. So you're better off with some kind of grinding tool. This, that's abrasive. It kind of loads up, but you could use a a fine saw, Dremel fine blade, looks like a little table saw. So let's see if I can do this on camera. Alright, that's what it looks like. I did touch it up and deburred a little bit with a file, but I'm not going to carry it too far for a video like this. Now I will make the part that goes in here, whatever it is. I left extra length here so that there would be some tubing with focus, darn it. That's not the one. No, oh, here it is. Wait till you're 80. You see there's a hollow space that will allow it to fit onto the engine, so that has to be custom made depending on what you need. Well, this is totally unprecedented that I found this piece in the scrap bin that was already turned down to the correct size. So all I got to do is take it over to the mill and mill a flat on there. How much? A fair amount. I really shouldn't use white delrin. You can't even begin to see it, can you? I, and you can't see it as you're working on the milling machine. It, but anyway, can you see the flat on there? And I will cut that off. Oh. 3 8 long, arbitrary number. All right, I cut it off. It, it cuts so nicely with that little hacksaw. This can be made out of wood or, or just about it. No, not wood if you're going to blow on it because it'll, it'll get moist. But now, since it's a, it's a slip fit, I'm going to stick it in there and position it, make sure it's oriented correctly, right where the mouth is, right about where you see it now. And then off camera, I'm going to put it in a V-block and punch it right there. In other words, I'm staking it on. I know my hand's going to be in the way, but what are you going to do? And now a test run. I'm just going to plug the hole right here. And for the plug, again, this fits perfectly, so I'm just going to saw that off. I could leave it on here for a demonstration, but I'll just saw it off, put it in, and stake it on, and then the whistle is done. Here's an important thing, and I did it twice. I did it two days ago, and now I did it again. Don't stake it right here, because you're staking on the flat spot, and crushing it, and closing the opening, so it needs to be staked on the back side. There's the plug. And that's such a good fit, I'm doing nothing with it. I'm leaving it that length because this is just a, a sample, but it's going to be very shrill and high in uh, whatever the note is. High pitch, I guess I, could, I should say. Now listen. <coughs> 
So, that is how you make a little steam whistle. Or, we used to make these out of a willow branch out in the backyard. A lot of fun ways. It's, it's something that was in the Boy Scout book, I think. Something you can do with your grandkids. So, you give it a try. Especially if you have one of these that is missing the whistle. But if you've got kids around, it's just fun to play around with things like that. They will lose interest pretty fast, but again, it has to be made so that it will fit over your particular, uh, well, not whistle, but your valve. This is the whistle valve if you watch that other video. Remember, this is a dummy video. <laughs> dummy governor! <laughs> Give me a comment on that when I say dummy governor, because I don't want to go too far, but I had some good comments the other time, so put that in the comments. Did anyone like this, or did I totally waste six hours? This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.